Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alamin Wal Aqibatul Muttaqin Was Salatu Was Salam Ala Sayyidil Anbiya Ayyul Mursalin Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Wabarakatuh I pray and beg Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala That He keep each and every one of us In good health and He help us to witness The completion of Ramadan In good Iman, good health and well-being Amin Alhamdulillah we have terminated Half of Ramadan and we are coming close towards the end of two-third of Ramadan, which brings us into the last one-third of Ramadan. We know as Muslims the whole month of Ramadan holds tremendous virtues and rewards. But from the month of Ramadan, from the practices of Rasulullah and his companions, we have learned that the last ten nights and last ten days of Ramadan are those it has tremendous rewards and tremendous virtues and is given preference over the remaining and the first 20 days of Ramadan. Main reason being, I will highlight three aspects from the Sunnah of Rasulullah wasallam. From the practices of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa have showed us his exertion, his devotion during these last 10 days of Ramadan. One of that being, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam coming to the last 10 days of Ramadan he will exhort more in ibadat, in salah, in nawafil, in optional salah and prayers. Has Aisha radiallahu anha narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when the time comes towards the last 10 days of Ramadan he will tighten his izar, his lower garments, his trousers so that he can exhort himself more in fulfilling ibadat and fulfilling optional prayers. And another narration mentioned that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would rarely have sleep in the night of Ramadan, in the last 10 nights of Ramadan, due to excessive ibadat, excessive worship in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Secondly, second point is that of we know the sunnah itikaf seclusion that normally takes place in the month of Ramadan in the masjid. But let us look, the whole aspect of this artikaf of seclusion has Shaykh al-Islam, one of the renowned, well-known renowned da'i invited to Islam. Ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah made mention that human beings, our hearts get detached to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and from his deen by mixing with people by eating and drinking excessively eating to our fill drinking to our fill our hearts get detached from the purpose of this life and from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and his deen and for this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala had made the month of Ramadan fasting that our body may be able to spiritually attach by decreasing our intake of food, our intake of water, so we will reflect and we will be more conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And for this also, Ibn Taymiyyah rahim Allah mentioned, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala stipulated i'tikaf, to, so that mankind will be free from mixing with individuals and they will be devoted and seclude themselves only with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Their actions will be between them and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this i'tikaf, is something we can even take place and we can even do in our home and in our abode by secluding ourselves and devote ourselves only for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala building our connection spiritually to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the last point I will highlight which is one of the famous point why these two aspects of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam these two practices of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam were relevant his excessive salah and his secluding himself, devoting for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only and worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was all in seeking this one specific night that is found within this last ten night. A night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala started the final revelation, the Quran, begin his final revelation to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The night when the Quran was revealed, it is a night when light will eliminate mankind to the end of life. It is a night when every matter is decreed or ordained. 
It is a night which we refer to as Laylatul Qadr, the night of power. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala <coughs> made this night the greatest of all nights. Like Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make the day of Arafah, which is at the time of Hajj, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes it as the greatest day of the entire year. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in this night reveal a whole surah, a whole chapter regarding to Laylatul Qadr. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal a few verses from Surah Dukhan, which is from the third to the sixth verse of Surah Dukhan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reveal regarding to this night of Laylatul Qadr. A night so virtuous that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whosoever misses out this night is a deprived person. Because it is at night, the gates of Jannah are open, well off. Without any hesitation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts dua of mankind. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned a hadith of, recorded by Imam Ahmad and Nasa'i that whosoever deprived of this night, deprived of the good of its night, he is deprived from something really great. And as Aisha radiallahu anha, she asked Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, what shall I do if I am to witness such a night? If I am to witness this night of Laylatul Qadr, what advice is, or what advice do you give me? Or what dua shall I read? Or what action, or what practice shall I do if I am to witness this night? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam replied, If you are to witness this night, constantly recite, Allahumma innaka a'fuun tuhibbul a'fuwa fa'fu anni. The translation which means, O oh Allah, you are the one who pardons greatly, and you love to pardon, so Allah forgive me, or Allah pardon me. So Rasulullah wasallam advised must to recite this constantly, which means seeking forgiveness, seeking pardon from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because the night of Laylatul Qadr being the night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accepts dua, accepts supplication. We all need the forgiveness of, forgiveness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to be able to be saved in this world and the hereafter. Then, regarding to the time of when is Laylatul Qadr, there's been no exact um, figure, no exact number of a date that is given. But Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with his advice, he advised us to seek it within the last 10 nights because it is found within the odd nights of the last 10 nights. So that is within 21, 23, 25, 27, etc. So the last 10 nights, all of the last 10 nights we take in seeking the night of Light of the Qadr, we make extra obedience, extra ibadat, extra worshiping to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala seeking that night. But regarding to when specifically the night is, it's not a specific night, a date that was given to us, but Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned to seek it within the odd nights. But yes, regarding to the night, there are various signs that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam mentioned in the night of Laylatul al Qadr. And from that, as Aisha radiallahu anha, Sorry, as Ubay bin Ka'ab radiallahu anhu narrated that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam began to one of the signs of Laylatul Qadr. The morning following Laylatul Qadr, the sun did not have any rays at the time of sunrise. At the rising of the sun, the morning following Laylatul Qadr, there did not have any rays as generally when the sun, whenever the sun rise, you will see different rays that will be spreading wide and far from the sun. But that morning from after Laylatul Qadr, there will be no sun, no rays of the sun. And another narration recorded by Muslim Abu Hurairah anhu says that when we the companions we were discussing about the signs of Laylatul Qadr in the presence of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said he asked them, the companions who was present, which one of you remembers when the moon arose and it was like half of a plate which means this moon at that time, it was like half of a plate, it was half of the size showing. And uh, Ibn Abbas wrote a and narrated another form of sign regarding to Laylatul Qadr. He said, Laylatul Qadr is a calm and pleasant night. It is neither cold nor is it too hot. And the sun, whenever it rises in the morning, it is feeble, it is red. It is such clear 
and some people say in a you know, layman term that you can look at the sun, you can gaze at the sun in awe without it bother even your eyes, without you know a general we cannot look at the sun because it is we cannot look at it with our straight eyes, it uh, it hurts our eyes, it can even damage our sight. But some even mention that the aspect of the sun being that morning after like as a cutter, it's such beauty and such awe that even the brightness of the sun it does not affect your eyes at to stare at it. So we pray by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He help us to benefit from this night. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us that we all witness this night, the night of Laylatul Qadr. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from those that He saved. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala emancipate from the fire of Jahannam. Jazakum Allah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.